I mean, I would have to say Fifth was probably one of the most um, emotionally connected characters, which I think is why he resonated so well with the audience and why I've been yeah. so blessed to go to so many conventions. Um, because, uh, yeah, I remember I prepped for it and uh, I was struggling a lot because I was playing it as an alien. And then a buddy of mine, we were running lines and he was like, that's not how you're going to do it, is it? <laughs> and I was like, oh, and then I realized this actually has to go to betrayal. So it has to start at love and go to betrayal. And that uh, that story arc, um, it's not a fun one to have to go through. No, and it's a lot of meat in terms of one episode. It really takes up what is like, you know, the 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 second the second and third you know uh of three pieces of of that story there's a lot that happens in there um what material were you given in the audition process were, were you aware you know when you were auditioning that there was going to be like um like he was going to be abandoned you know was that was that presented to you when you were auditioning or did you find that out when you got the full script i'm curious to know no, when you I, found that out um I didn't know at the audition. Um, in the breakdown, it did say that he was going to be abandoned. Um, okay. I didn't actually have all the scenes. I think the scenes I had were, um, I think the scene was when I'm talking to Carter about having carried them back. Okay. Um, in the engine room. All right. Yeah. Yeah. This is. That one I remember specifically. It's. <sighs> It's one of the defining moments, maybe before we, we really get into fifth, I should I should say, I was just reading through uh, the comments um, earlier and someone, uh, General Maximus had put, this was before we started, you know, I, I agree what they did was a necessary evil and you can understand why they did it, but it was also the first time I, the, this, uh, this uh, viewer, was disappointed in them for their moral conduct. And it's like, wow, you know, that really, that really says it because that team is about heroes and what they did to him was for the greater good, but it was also the wrong thing to do. You know, yeah. there's, there's, there's a lot going on there in that scene. Telling me, tell me about, about finding that character, you know, going, okay. So you were going to play him more alien and you switched to a more, more, well, more I, human I had a I had auditioned for Stargate so many times. It okay. was, um, I'd gone in constantly and it was like lab technicians, military people all the time. And, um, <clears throat> you know, you're giving, you're a young actor, so you're giving everything to every single audition. And um, I remember the last audition I did before fifth, um, I was like at the helm, spaceships were flying outside, doing the audition. And it ended and Peter DeLuise stopped and looked across and he leaned across and he said, you know, man, that was awesome. He's like, you nail every audition you come in for. And he's like, but it's not you. None of them, none of them are you. And so I called my agent after that and I just said, I'm taking a break, I'm taking a break from Stargate. Can't do it anymore. It's been like 30 auditions <laughs> with rejections, just too much from one source. Um, and I guess I was away, maybe, I don't know how long it was, it could have been a year or so, but she called me up and said, they've requested you for this audition. And I said, no. And she said, no, they are asking you to come in for this. They know your work. They're asking you this time to please come in for this one. And uh, it's a guest star. So I was like, yeah, okay, I'll go, I'll go for it. And then I got the sides and I was like, okay, this is way more interesting. Um, but I was still a bit reserved because you get burned so many times. You're just like, oh, do I really want to give 100%? And um, so I think I was holding back. And I said, I was, like I said, I was uh, running lines with a friend of mine. And he was like, are you, is that how you're going to do it? And uh, he was like, you really have to like, let go of all the acting part of this. This is one of those ones you get, to go, you're not just a, a word sayer. You're not just doing lines. This is one of the ones where you really got to mm -hmm. invest, you know, and in theater, we do that all the time. You have more time to work with material and um, rehearse with other people and feed off of those relationships and inform your character. So I was really lucky to have a friend who went went to the mat with me and we worked the scene out and got to uh, the emotional truth of it. And it was, it was tough. I've got to say, you know, um, once you book a gig and you're in that space, you can perform it over and over again, but getting there, it was a, it was a struggle. Um, 
there was a, he pushed me really hard. There was some harsh words at times, <laughs> like, <laughs> like in, just, he was, he's really good. And uh, he was like, he just, it has to be vulnerability and you can't fake it. You just can't, you know? And when I watched it back, um, yeah, that I can see why people comment on that last moment. When he, he says, freezes in the right. Yeah. And it's just like, it's like, ow. Yeah. I'm glad they record those things so you don't have to keep going over them <laughs> again and again. <laughs> well, you see the look on it, expression on it right when he's free, he freezes. You know, it's, it's, it's the moment, in, in my opinion, you, you may, you may agree, disagree with this. It's the moment when the, when the, the, I guess it's a, I don't know if it's disappointment is the correct characterization turns to anger. Uh, and it's, it's right there. That's, that's in my opinion, when, when the time is frozen, he's not really trying to analyze what's happened anymore. He knows that they've betrayed him and it's damn, it's a powerful scene. Even they're arguing on the ship. We shouldn't have done this. And Jack's like, what do you suggest? You know, what was the alternative? So it's, it's a great, it's a great episode of. Yeah. I think that. I think that it's definitely not a planned moment. If that transition that you see towards yeah. the end, if that's what you're reading into it, it's that like what I watched, it was just like, it is literal, literally disbelief. Like he just looks and he sees it and it's like, it's a new feeling and it's just sort of washed right over him. And it's just like, we all have that in life when we're trying to like, yeah. someone gives you bad news in public and all of a sudden you have to put up the, you even like you're, your emotion is going to switch and for one millisecond there's the truth of the level of truth in that pain or whatever and then you put up the public acceptable version of pain because you know you don't have to pretend it doesn't hurt because everyone knows it's going to hurt but you want to at least put on that face and it, the way they edited it it's beautifully beautifully done mm -hmm. that he's caught right in that raw first time he's ever ever felt that feeling ever he doesn't know how to process it and it's just hangs there if there had been I, i'm curious as to your opinion on this if there had been a, a, a difference in the, the circumstances where uh they could have gotten away with him aboard the ship where like for instance the the replicators wouldn't have like held on to the the landing gear and prevented the ship from escaping do you think that he would have continued to remain loyal to them all the way through for you know in, into like potential missions together in the future or as an advisor, you know, or do you think he, that he would have transformed at some point into something more akin to his family's true nature? I'm curious as to what he, you think. If he had left with them, if he had left yeah. with them and his family was frozen in time. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think so. It's a nature versus nurture thing. Right. And I think that he is, um, yeah, his surroundings would have been formed, um, what he, he had become. So he would have continued to stay a positive force. Yeah, I think, I think <sighs> so. Yeah. Yeah. See, it <laughs> makes it even worse. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching this clip from Dial the Gate. You can find the full live stream shows on our YouTube channel or visit dialthegate.com for the complete schedule. See you on the other side. <laughs>